Hello everyone, uh, my name is Viktor Neustroev, thank you for joining this webinar. T today the topic of the webinar is how to avoid traps in optimization. So looks like there are nine attendees. Please guys, uh, write uh, down if, um, or if you can see me and if you can hear me well. And by the way, where are you from? Okay, yeah, okay, from UK, Denmark, uh, hi guys, yeah, I, uh, yeah, the sound is good, perfect. Okay, we are waiting for more people to join the webinar. Okay, so today we will discuss uh, uh, how to optimize expert advisors in MetaTrader 4 correctly, how to avoid the traps of optimization. I will, I will explain it a little bit wait, later while we are waiting for other attendees. Let me just um, uh, tell about the news. Yeah, hi Paul from South Africa. Yeah, uh, Paul, uh, if I'm not mistaken, you attended all the webinars I conducted. That's great. Uh, by the way, uh, yeah, uh, by the way, guys, uh, does anybody of you use the expert advisor I provided on my, on one of the, my, of my webinars? Uh, the, this expert advisor is called Stomper. Does anyone use, this, use it on a real account or maybe on demo account? Okay, so um, let's speak about the news. Today we are waiting for, uh, for ECB to finally announce a reduction of its monthly bond buying at uh, October's policy meeting. Uh, people see it as a big step towards the end of easy money. And uh, the main question is uh, by how much will the monthly purchase be reduced? And uh, of course, how long will tapering last? Uh, there are rumors in the markets that ECB may reduce monthly purchases to around 30 or 40 billion euros per month from the current 60 billion. As for the duration of this program, the markets are expecting the bond buying program to be extended by roughly six to nine months. So the current program ends at the end of 2017, so at the end of this year. So uh, another program will last for six to nine months. Uh, what else um, about uh, European economy? Uh, uh, now investors um, know that the macroeconomic landscape in Europe remains encouraging, but inflation is still below the golden 2% target. And of course, uh, it should impact today's ECB meeting. So if you remember, Mario Draghi um, said that uh, they want to increase the inflation up to 2%. And after that, we will, they will stop um, bond buying program. Anyway, so uh, if ECB reduces this bond buying program, it, uh, it means that uh, Euro can increase its value to against American dollar and maybe against other currencies. Maybe uh, I, I think it can happen today, but um, of course it depends on the duration of the bond buying program. If they say, for example, that it it will be six months, then uh, 
uh, Euro can increase in the nearest future, I think. But of course, it's uh, these are markets. I mean, these are financial markets, and nobody can guarantee it. So uh, when you make trades, you made you make them on your own risk. Okay, what else? Uh, to th this week, uh, there was a replenishment in crude oil inventories in America, but it was just a sl slight replenishment, less than one million barrels. Um, however, there was four withdrawals in a row four weeks ago, uh, but uh, currently the crude oil uh, price, I mean um, WTI futures, are near the local maximum, and uh, so maybe there should be a correction in the nearest future, but then the price can still continue an uptrend. Okay, what else? Uh, today, United States will uh, announce its GDP for the third quarter. The forecast is 2.5%. Uh, however, the previous value is 3.1%. Uh, I don't know how it can affect the market now when uh, all the investors are focused on uh, ECB meeting an announcement. But I'm sure that um, the announcement of GDP, I mean, the release of GDP can increase um, volatility of the market. Especially for the nearest, uh, just for, for two hours or two, three hours after the release. What else? Um, Russian Central Bank is going to decrease interest rate today. So uh, the previous value is 8.5%. So they're going to decrease it to 8.25%. Uh, mm, looks like uh, Central Bank is trying to control inflation in Russia, but at the same time, they are going to make. Uh, money more cheap, what means that they want to stimulate um, uh, banks and companies to get more credits and to invest money. So, um, I, but anyway, I don't believe that it can affect uh, Russian economy in a positive way. Okay, there are 14 attendees in today's webinar, and we can start. Uh, this webinar is recorded, and uh, you can watch it later, of course, on forexbot.com. So again, let me uh, let me introduce myself. You may know that uh, my name is Viktor Nustroyev. I'm a private trader, and uh, since 2003, I've been trading financial markets. And uh, I started with Forex, then I broadened my horizons to commodity markets. Uh, now I specialize uh, in agricultural markets because I consider them to be more transparent. But I also trade Forex and I have a few strategies that work. So today our topic is how to avoid the traps of optimization in MetaTrader 4. Okay, uh, so I'm going to turn off my camera and please read the disclaimer. I have a strict algorithm how to optimize an expert advisor, and I have already demonstrated it to you on one of the previous webinars. Um, that webinar was called How to Optimize Expert Advisors in MetaTrader 4. If you use that method, I believe you will find optimal parameters and make your expert advisor profitable. However, in this webinar, I'm going to teach you another method of expert advisor optimization. 
And uh, I can't say exactly which of them is the best, but you should know both. Moreover, the method that I show you today can save you much time and at the same time you can avoid traps in optimization, what means that the parameters you find would work not only on the historical data you used for optimization. Okay, so I hope you read the disclaimer and let's start. Here is the plan of the webinar. Um, first, we will uh, speak about, um, I will talk about the strategy uh, that we are going to optimize today. Then, what you should do before optimizations. Then, I will tell you about the problems and mistakes of improper optimization. Uh, then, I will demonstrate to you the optimization process. And, of course, by the end, I will, um, by the end of the webinar, I will uh, give you some optimization tips. If you have any questions, you can ask them now. Okay, there is a question by Leonard. Um, this, uh, the, the record of this webinar can be found on forexbot.com. Uh, when, I can say exactly, I believe in a few days. Okay, what is optimization? Um, let's start from the beginning. So, uh, creation of any trading strategy is to formulate the rules of opening long and short positions. Usually, we base our rules on some indicators and parameters. If we change them, the profitability of the strategy also changes. The question is whether we should optimize these parameters or we can just fit them to the historical data. Looking ahead, I can say that if we make an optimization improperly, we can get trapped. And this trap is called the trap in optimization. What means that our strategy with optimized parameters would work only on historical data that it was optimized on. There are two different procedures which we can call an optimization. The first procedure is when we are trying to find or create a proper trading strategy for a certain market. For example, for American dollar against Japanese yen or euro against British pound. We analyze the market, its behavior, and make a conclusion whether it's a trendy or flat market. Then we try to apply indicators which usually work while trending or flat. Then we choose indicators which suit most. And this process is called an optimization, but we may call it the first type or the first, step, uh, the first stage of optimization. And uh, the first stage of optimization um, can be divided into a few sub-stages. The first one is the emergence of the idea about what this strategy should be based on. The next is selection of the type of criteria or decision rules. The third sub-stage is defining system parameters. The next is strategy test and the last one is uh, uh, just looking back for previous substages, if it's required to make any changes to the strategy. Uh, so when we decided which indicators to apply to the strategy, our task is to find such parameters of these indicators that our strategy will demonstrate the most profitable and sustainable performance. And uh, the procedure of searching such parameters we can also call an optimization, but we may call it the second type or the second stage of the optimization. And this is what we are going to talk about on this webinar. 
So let's imagine that we had a variety of different trading strategies and we choose the one that suits better for, for example, Euro uh, against British Pound. For example, we created the strategy. For this webinar, we will use the strategy which is called just SP. Um, the expert advisor of this strategy can be found anywhere on the internet and it has an open code. Moreover, I will share it in our private trading group on Facebook. Let me describe you the rules of the strategy. First, it works on Euro USD or Euro against British Pound and 15 time frame. This strategy uses a momentum, stochastic and RSI. Um, so it opens long position when the market is oversold. What means oversold? Uh, it means that these three indicators are lower than some certain levels which are defined. Oh, uh, they, they can be defi uh, defined manually. And this strategy opens short positions when the market is overbought. So when these three indicators are higher than uh, some certain levels. Um, the strategy closes the positions using only fixed take profit or stop loss. Um, actually, I think it's not the best way to close the position. Um, there should be some uh, other filters. So maybe you will you will uh, take this expert advisor and add some filters to close position better with higher profit. It, it's possible because fixed take profit and stop loss it's just a base. Uh, that we usually use. Okay, so uh, here, for example, you see that the market is oversold. So these three indicators are lower than some levels which were defined. Um, so, and uh, this strategy opens a long position here. Then we see that um, the take profit worked and it was a successful trade. However, we also can see that um, uh, the market here, when, when this trade was closed and another was opened, uh, is overbought. What means that we should also open a short position. And once again, here, we we are sure that the market is overbought. These three indicators are higher than uh, their levels. And uh, here we open a short position and we closed it a few days later when uh, uh, by a take profit, by a fixed take profit. So this is the explanation of the strategy we are going to optimize today on this webinar. Okay, just now let's speak about what should we do before optimization. First of all, we should define the market and time frame which, uh, which suit best for this trading strategy. We should make some back tests and check. Uh, please look at these charts. These are tests on different currencies. So this strategy works better on Euro USD, British Pound USD, Euro against British Pound. And um, today we will optimize it for Euro against British Pound. So we we made this test with default parameters. So, for example, it doesn't work on euros, 
against Swiss franc, uh, American dollar against Canadian, and Australian dollar against American. Well, of course, it uh, it uh, brings some profit, but uh, not so much. It works better on Euro, British pound. Uh, then our task is to define uh, the time frame to test. So you see, I um, the strategy was originally designed for Euro, British Pound, M15, and you see that uh, it brings some profit, even with the default parameters. So um, of course, it's you can also. Uh, see some profit on M15 time frame, but it uh, loses on M30 time frame. So now you see that M15 time frame uh, suits better for this strategy. Okay, what else uh, should we do? We should define the type of the strategy. Uh, it's it's intra intraday strategy. So you see that almost uh, all trades can be closed same day. Okay, it's intraday strategy, and uh, that's why, uh, according to this table, and uh, I just want to remind you that I made this table myself according to my experience of trading, testing, and optimizing different strategies. And I have already demonstrated this table to you on my another webinar about optimization. So according to this table, we should optimize it on a historical data of 6 to 12 months. So I suggest making an optimization for this expert advisor for the 2016 year. And then we will run a forward test and check whether it works. The forward test should be more than three months. So this is my um, MetaTrader 4 uh, trading platform. This is this expert advisor. Um, so let's use date from the 1st of January of 2016. And by the end, uh, so okay, let's. Uh, by the end of that year. Okay, so uh, what should we do next? Before we run an optimization, be sure that you have all the historical data you need. If not, uh, then download it from the server, for example, tools. Uh, history center mm. okay then euro GBP and one and then you should click download twice Uh, okay, what else? When we optimize, it's recommended to use every tick as a model. So, uh, but sometimes to save the time, we can also use control points. But it depends on the certain expert advisor. So, uh, when we use control points, the results are considered estimates only. And when we use every tick model, uh, it is the most accurate method of modeling. Uh, but since this method involves a large amount of tick data, it is typically slow and can bog down the computer's operation. 
So uh, let's check whether we can use control points or not. How to do this? Let's, for example, uh, uh, choose three months here. We can just um, choose any uh, time interval. Um, yeah, there is a question by Leonard. Could we get a copy of this expert advisor? Of course, of course you can. Um, I'm going to share it, or maybe Damian will share it uh, in our private trading group on Facebook. Uh, moreover, there is an open code of this expert advisor. I can show it to you right now. Just wait a second. Yeah, here it is. By the way, it was made by uh, MetaQuotes. It, it, it's easy, very easy. So very simple expert advisor. Okay, what else? Um, so how to uh, check if we can use control points to save our time. So we choose here three months and then we want to make back tests using control points. So our task is just to run two back tests and then compare the results. So we click start. This is um, the result. There are 34 trades and the profit is about $300. Now we use every tick. Again, we see that uh, total trades is um, 30, 34, so the same, and uh, even the profit is the same. So if the number of trades is approximately the same for both methods, we can use control points. So to save our time, we will use control points to optimize uh, parameters. But um, of course, when we will find the optimal parameters, we will make a back test using um, all ticks, uh, using every tick model to be sure that everything works right. Okay, so here. We choose one year, 2016. Uh, and uh, we can uh, then choose the parameters and start optimization. But um, first I want um, to tell about the problems of improper optimization. Uh, when we run an optimization in MetaTrader for strategy tester, our goal is to find the best parameters. And here we can face with some problems. And that's why sometimes we make mistakes. It's very easy to fit your expert advisor to the historical data it was optimized on. Why does it happen? First, because there are too many parameters to optimize and beginners try to optimize them all simultaneously. What is a mistake, of course. Uh, sometimes they also look only for the most profitable areas. I mean to the parameters which provide the highest profit. However, our task is to make the strategy not only profitable, but sustainable too. Very often, uh, the settings producing the highest profit are not optimal. 
and they can't provide the sustainable performance of the strategy in the future. Uh, what else? Uh, beginners sometimes also neglect of the forward test and run the strategy on real money account. As a result, they lose money and consider the strategy to be unprofitable. If we conduct our process of optimization in the same way, of course, we will get in stable strategy. And uh, the strategy with such parameters is unlikely to produce any profit in future. Okay, so how to solve the main problem of optimization and not get trapped? Uh, some can say just uh, don't use optimization at all, but uh, this is bullshit. If we don't use optimization, we miss the optimal solution and uh, reject potentially profitable strategy because uh, the settings we choose manually didn't produce any profit. Of course, we should use automatic optimization in Strategy Tester and MetaTrader 4. So let's analyze the optimization problem from the mathematical point of view. In the general case when there are a lot of optimized parameters, we are looking for hyperplane in the area when the profit is stable and changes more or less evenly with a small change in the parameters. That's why our goal in optimization is to find a solution in which the profit is maximized and a slight deviation from the optimal solution does not lead to a drastic change in profit. Uh, the problem is that we can get into the area of the local maximum, the point at which the profit will be maximal but uh, a slight change in the, parameter of, in the parameters leads to losses. Thus, uh, with a high prob so thus, with high probability, such parameters will lead to loss of the deposit in case of a slight change in the market conditions. And you know, on Forex, such changes occur very often. Uh, that's why all local extremums should be avoided. Uh, and unfortunately, in MetaTrader 4, there is no such algorithm which can automatically define the areas of optimal parameters. Um, however, MetaQuos provided a better strategy tester built into MetaTrader 5, and maybe someday we will switch to MetaTrader 5. I know that um, some traders use it now, but I don't like. Uh, however, MetaTrader 4 can build the optimization chart for one or two optimized parameters. It means that when we project our results to the surface, theoretically we can find the optimal solution. In other words, our task is to optimize parameters in pairs. And then, of course, to find the intersection of optimal areas. Uh, when we have only three parameters to optimize, we should run the optimization process three times. But if we have five parameters, for example here, we have five, uh, then we should run the optimization process ten times. Okay, so what we are going to optimize today? Take profit, stop loss, uh, RSI period, stochastic period, and uh, momentum. Of course, we can optimize also uh, these levels, RSI result, stochastic result, and so the same level for momentum indicator, but uh, 
in this case we can uh, get trapped. So today in this webinar, oh, of course, so you should, your task is to optimize these five, but um, in this webinar we will optimize only three of them because it will save us time, uh, but at the same time uh, it helps to understand the essence of the procedure. So three first is okay, take profit, stop loss and RSI period. Okay, so today, uh, first we will optimize the first pair, which is stop loss and stop loss and RSI period, then take profit and RSI period, and the last pair are take profit and stop loss. Uh, I will show how. So let's click. Click optimization here. There is a question. Mm -hmm. Okay, good question. Um, uh, how much work do I typically do with optimizing before trading real money with an expert advisor? Um, do I try to optimize all the parameters before beginning? No, I mean before beginning to trade this expert advisor. Okay, it depends on the expert advisor. If it's a new one, then I can spend uh, for the whole week optimizing it and maybe then I will make a revision and uh, try to improve the logic behind this expert advisor and then I will continue optimizing it for, for another week. But of course uh, after I find uh, all the parameters I uh, and uh, so I consider the this expert advisor to be profitable. I run it on on demo account or in some uh, sense account because I don't want to lose much money if um, if I don't trust this system. So after it works on demo or in the cent account for month or to three months then I can um, run it on a real account but anyway I will run it with a small lot and when I see that it really brings profit I can increase the um, so the lot for this expert advisor um, Okay, and uh, the second question is um, um, if I try to optimize all the parameters. No, not all of them. For example, uh, for this expert advisor I won't optimize these levels. I mean uh, RSI over results, stochastic over results, so RSI over bot and so these levels I because if I optimize them, I'm sure that I can um, can be trapped. So let's uh, consider them to be constant. Uh, for the scalpers that I uh, trade, some of the some of the parameters I also don't optimize at all. Um, Sometimes if I apply the same indicator which also works in uh, another expert advisor which is successful, I um, use the period which I use in that one. So for example, if I use 
RSI with a period of 14 in uh, another trading system which uh, trades the same market and use the like, approximately the same logic it means that I would choose RSI 14 and I don't want to optimize it um, for this uh, for this exact strategy I don't know which are the optimal parameters so that's why I'm going to optimize these five so the periods of these three indicators and take profit and stop loss moreover I believe that uh, if you want to run this expert advisor on your real money account you should make a revision and improve the logic Okay, let's continue. Ah, yeah, we click start. So then, oh, looks like I made a mistake. Oh, no. Okay, let's click start. Yes, everything should be. And uh, uh, please look at optimization graph. Uh, so here is uh, the it's a profit graph of all passes, and it is drawn automatically here and this graph allows to estimate and visualize uh, the profitability of different combination of inputs okay then we uh, tick 2d surface and uh, Mm -hmm. And uh, this chart represents the amount of profit. I mean, so I mean these Greek rectangles of each pass. So I usually use this represent. Yeah. Okay. So the x axis is stop loss and y axis is RSI period so this um, uh, there is a question okay what do I mean by make a revision of the logic um, well, let me just uh, explain you by this example Well, just look at this um, of the rules of this strategy the strategy closes the trade using fixed take profit or stop loss I'm sure that uh, we can find a better way to close the trades so maybe we can apply uh, some uh, uh, some filters maybe some timing filters um, so we can also uh, uh, apply timing filter for um, uh, opening the positions for example don't open uh, during the night or maybe just open only at nights so yeah just uh, more filters are needed for are required for this strategy okay so let's look at um, this area uh, these green rectangles show us the most profitable settings and our task is to choose the parameters with more green rectangles so dark, dark green means higher profit this is how we choose optimal areas for example here are three green rectangles in a row and here two 
That's why we get two optimal solutions. So the first one is uh, stop loss from 700 to 850. It's here. And uh, in this case, RSI period is 22. And here uh, we see that uh, the stop loss is from 800 to 850. RSI period from 8 to 12. Uh, then we do the same thing uh, when we optimize take profit and RSI period. So now um, again X axis is take profit and Y axis is uh, RSI period. And this is the solution. So take profit from uh, 400 to 500 and in this case a recipe period is 12 only 12 and another solution take profit from uh, 550 to 600 a recipe period from 14 to 16 then again we do the same thing uh, when we optimize only take profit and stop loss so we optimize uh, pairs of parameters. And uh, here is the solution. So take profit from uh, 400 to 500. And in this case, the stop loss should be from 800 to 850. And there is another solution, maybe not the best, but you see that uh, the, these uh, rectangles are light green, so with smaller profit, so the stop loss is uh, from 600 to 700, and uh, take profit is from 900 to 950. And after all optimization steps were completed, so after we did it, our task is to find the intersection of optimal areas. So these were three optimization steps. And uh, now our task is to find the best, uh, best settings. So we should notice the intersection of these three areas, of these three solutions. Okay, so, um, okay, how to, how to find uh, the intersection? Uh, for example, uh, let's start with RSI period. So from the second optimization, we hear that, uh, we see that uh, it can be 12 or from, uh, it can be 12, 14, 15 and 16. Uh, from the first optimization, we see that uh, it can be 22, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. So 12, uh, RSI period should be 12, and this is the best setting for RSI. Uh, as for take profit, we see, uh, we optimized it uh, in our second and third steps. So, and every time we got that uh, take profit should be from 400 to 500. So the take profit should be like this. And we also, okay, uh, let's continue with stop loss. Uh, and Here we see that uh, in the first optimization step, we see that stop loss is from 800 to uh, 850. And here again, 
And the third stage, we see that uh, this stop loss is in our solution. So these are final settings. So we can you choose take profit from 400 to 500, stop loss from 800 to 850, and a recite period should be 12. Uh, are there any questions about how to find intersection between uh, uh, these three areas? Okay, I just want to say that why we chose 500 and 800 for stop loss. Um, because these are median results. For example, here we see that stop loss can, uh, can be varied from 700 to 850. So the median is 800. And uh, for the take profit, it differs from 400 to 600. And again, the median is 500. Uh, it, it means that our settings will be sustainable if we choose the median. Uh, first, we find the intersection, and then we are we want to find uh, we want to choose the median that we see. Okay, so I used these uh, parameters and then I uh, I just check how these optimal input parameters uh, worked in 2017. And this is what I got. Uh, so it, of course, it produced some profit, not much, just uh, $264. It was uh, more than 100 trade, trades. Here, um, uh, absolute, oh, maximal drawdown is too high, over than uh, 600. I actually don't like it. But uh, looks like these settings work. I, I'm sure that uh, uh, this uh, expert advisor can uh, demonstrate so the same performance in other years. So, of course, it won't earn much money, but uh, you see, it doesn't lose. But, of course, as I have already said, it's uh, financial markets and nobody guarantee the profit. Okay. Um, Oh, okay, just once again about this expert advisor. Looks like uh, this expert advisor work with these settings, but uh, of course you should improve the logic behind the expert advisor before you run it uh, on your real account. If you want, you can run it on de demo account and um, we, um, you can share the results later with with us and what else but uh, as i have already say uh, as i have already said you can you can just uh, apply some other filters and improve the strategy and then you can optimize it once again mhm mm yeah, I, I absolutely um, agree with you that the profit factor of 1 and um, uh, zero 07 is too low and uh, I wouldn't uh, run this expert advisor until the profit factor would be over, uh, at least over one, one and a half. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. Of course, I agree. So that's why I want to, you to improve uh, the logic. I just uh, wanted to show you the way how to find uh, the most sustainable uh, uh, optimal parameters.
Okay, so what I want to say in conclusion, of course, there are, okay, there is one more question. Ah, no. Okay, there are several tips about how to optimize. Uh, the first one, of course, history da historical data should be representative. And uh, even for expert advisors working on daily charts, it should be more than three years. Uh, or what else? You should test your strategy using different time intervals. It helps you to assess the parameters you choose. And don't optimize too many parameters simultaneously because of high chance to get trapped. This is what I told you. So um, we uh, we optimized only five parameters in uh, in this expert advisor, but there was uh, there was about let me check. Yeah, there was uh, five plus, there was 11 parameters to optimize, but we optimized only five of them. Um, to decrease the time of optimization, just increase the step of the parameters you're going to optimize. And you won't miss the best area. Uh, after that, you can explore it in more details. So, I mean, this area in more details, so make a, um, uh, you, you can decrease the step later. And of course, uh, if you see that your expert advisor works approximately the same uh, in uh, every tick and uh, control points models, use control points because it's faster. And of course, don't optimize your advisor too long. You'd better improve the logic behind it. Okay, so now I want to run a poll. How satisfied are you from the webinar? And please vote when uh, uh, one is bad and five is excellent. Uh, okay, just once again, I also want uh, to warn you not to run this expert advisor on your real account as it is. Uh, by the example of this expert advisor, I wanted to demonstrate you another method of optimization which helps you not to get trapped and not to fit the parameters to the historical data. If you use this optimization method, your expert advisor's future performance is likely to be more sustainable. And of course, this expert advisor requires additional revision. If you want to use this strategy, you should improve the logic behind it. Well, for example, as I said, you may close the position when the strategy shows a reversal signal and uh, don't trade when the market is too volatile using this strategy. Try to apply some different filters that can avoid opening a position when the market is trendy. So you can apply some um, flat filters. Okay, now I, I hope everyone voted and they closed the poll. So, as I said, this strategy that was shown in this webinar works successfully uh, when the market is flat. So, you may, you, you may try to improve it yourself. Um, thank you for your attention. This is all I wanted to show you on this webinar. And if you have some questions, don't hesitate to ask them now. I'll wait for a few minutes for questions if there are some. Uh, if you want, you can also share the results of um, Stomper if you use it. Yeah. Thank you for the questions anyway. Looks like there are no more questions.
Okay, after the webinar, I will send uh, the presentation and uh, the, is, uh, this extra expert advisor to Damian, and I believe he will share it with you on uh, our uh, in our private trading group on for Facebook. Okay, thank you guys for coming. I, I hope you liked the webinar. Um, so. Yeah, let's let's just finish. And uh, just one more thing I want to say. Um, this webinar was recorded and you can watch it later on forexboard.com. Okay, thank you for uh, for coming. Bye.